there are uh, in all organizations associations you get what you tune to lot of people go to college some of them are children of very rich people or powerful politicians they go there only to have good time they will they will get it they want good time in college they will get it but they won't get a degree and a job there are people who go there maybe to study along with that some friends they will get it there are some people who get who go there to develop their sports skills they will get it there are some others who focus on their studies definitely they will excel similarly if you know what you want in life you will get what you want because life is life is by itself fullness completeness yourself god see i am making a very rash statement very rash statement and i can assure you that whatever i am saying is not necessarily is necessarily i am not living it right but that is the truth truth doesn't change truth doesn't change so therefore since this is the most important topic and i have tried several these meditation sessions recently and all of them have said it works if it doesn't work for you you should come back and ask me the questions because you you won't get another opportunity like this it works it will not solve your uh, problem of money you get knowledge you discover your the self your brahman you will not take away your debts saying you are brahman it will not remove your sickness right saying you are brahman will not give you power over everybody then why should i know it why should i know it will come to that first you have to know what to expect what not to expect what you should expect from what you are going to do what not to expect before i go to that let me tell you i have just now told you that necessarily i am not living what i am talking the first question you should ask me if you are not living what you are talking why are you wasting our time this is the first question you should ask right what did i say i said i am not living what i am talking what am i not living stopping my worries stopping my fears stopping my complexes i am not able to do that but then why are you te teaching to me because i find a different dimension which does not depend on these things which anybody can tap there and live any time in that and allow these mad 
experiences to pass through. These you cannot help. Allow them to pass through. They are like a bullet in the gun. Once you have triggered it, you cannot stop it. Once you have triggered a gun, you can't stop the bullet. Your experiences, your uh, fears, your shortcomings, your agitations, your fears, your agitations, your shortcomings, your physical problems cannot be stopped or not meant to be stopped. Sages have not stopped. Gods have not stopped. They are programmed to pass through because your destiny is not totally independent. Your destiny is linked to others. You have come to you have come with a program to the world. Now that you say this world is nothing, it's it's it is an illusion. God alone is real. I am living in that. No, several people have been linked in our life through the prarabdha. Therefore, you have to go through that. But a wise man knows the best in this world. The best in this world is still does today. I do not know what, what makes it do. I have recently I have uh, learned it four months back. One of the best statements of Sri Gurudev. That's happening almost every day in our uh, uh, group postings itself. The, the sentence that I have learned, which I repeated many times in the group, because it's so true. Coincidence is the way God stays anonymous. Coincidence is the way God stays anonymous. What is the coincidence today? Read uh, uh, Nitya's post in Sri Hit today. That is the topic I'm talking. That's the topic I'm talking. You can't stop things. You need not stop things. Is there a moment in Krishna's life where he could say, hi, next one month I am going on a holiday. Every minute born in jail, died by somebody shooting him. And till then, every minute was a problem. Krishna's life, born in jail, shot by an arrow. And before his eyes, the entire community killed each other. Would you like to have Krishna's life? Would you like to have Rama's life? If they could not stop their uh, problems and agitation, how are you? they going to help you? Because they are not meant to be. You need them. Others need it. You need them. Others need it. But then, should I wait for all that process to go on? No, in spite of them, in spite of them, you on your will can tap a dimension which gives you meaning, purpose, motive, happiness, fullness of life. It doesn't depend upon worldly things because worldly things are perfectly imperfect. Can never be perfect. They are not meant to be perfect. Finite things can never be perfect. What happens to us? We see many of our friends do not have our problems. So we think they are all happy. You are the only one not happy. True. They don't have your problems. 
you don't have their problems they don't have your problems you don't have their problem each is programmed differently this problem itself is a confusion i told you i am no exception i am highly worried in insecure and all that but does truth change because i am not able to control my mind truth doesn't change it is the fullness is the happiness is the uh, uh, completeness is immortality dependent on mind mind is finite mind is death mind is finite mind is death mind is relative mind is comparative mind is agitation how do you expect through this mind fullness completeness immortality in sleep this mind is not there and you have detached from the body what is your state happiness in sleep this mind is not there you have detached from the body you are happy so all our problems are given by the mind is there something called a mind no it's a perception each one sees things differently so the problems are not belong to facts the problems belong to perceptions from a false finite relative apparent not real world of objects and experiences all our problems belong to start with the body and even mind intellect are connected with the body 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 relationship body is conditions body is needs are you the body we'll come to that later and if you are the body i'll i'll take it in detail later right now some first aid if you are the body the body is still there when life has gone out they can just embalm it and uh, preserve it for all time if you are the body if you are the mind and intellect in deep sleep it is not there therefore you should, they should bury you and what body is continuously changing every few years every cell in the body has changed and you remember all the changes therefore you should be different from the body because the body has changed that you who remember the changes experience the changes has not changed so you should be different from the body because you are the subject that's your object that's your possession same thing with the mind there is nothing as a mind it's a flow of thoughts it's a flow of thoughts this moment agitation next moment joy next moment fear next moment anger goes on it's a procession i remember the various moods happened at least today moods have gone if i am the mind i should have gone with them i remember the moods but i have not gone with them therefore i am neither the mind i am not the body i am not the mind nor am i the one who is 
thinking now because before the class i was confused now i am confusing others after the class right i will get back my state of confusion because that's my birthright right so this is also changing the intellect and i say my body my mind my intellect my body my 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 mind my intellect cannot be me my dog cannot be me my car cannot be me my house cannot be me where whatever you say my you cannot be that you are seeing their changes you are not that you say my therefore you are not that beautiful now what is the purpose of this class all of us whether he is a sinner or a saint whether he is a sinner or a saint have only one motive corollary another motive one motive is to be happy corollary is to avoid pain they are not in fact two motives it's only one motive i want to be happy but avoiding unhappiness is part of wanting to be happiness this is the motive whether is a sinner or a saint whether he is a sinner or a saint he wants happiness oh happiness i get it uh, now you know ipl is going on see it you will get happiness 100% you will get but how long one and a half hours and one and a half hours also complete no your problems are coming to your mind on and off even then it's not one and a half hours joy they finite they cannot give you what you want you want nothing short of complete happiness unpunctuated uh, unpunctuated unadulterated the body cannot give you the mind cannot give you the intellect cannot give you because they are finite and tell me one problem that does not belong to the body mind or intellect only one problem somebody give me sample this problem does not belong to the body mind or intellect there is not one problem that doesn't belong either to the body mind or intellect and you are not the body you are not the mind you are not the intellect therefore where do you have a problem your problem is confusion of identity confusion of identity what is this confusion you say i am hungry when you said i am hungry you have decided you are the body because you didn't say my body is hungry my stomach is hungry i am hungry you said therefore you have decided you are the body and after some time say i am angry when you said i am angry you have decided you are the mind body is not the mind mind is not the body now tell me clearly because how can i talk to somebody who doesn't even know his id identity how can anybody talk you can't talk to somebody who has lost his personal id only madman will lose their id madman alone will not be able to give you his identity so if you are not able to give your identity first get your identity properly it is it is below anybody's dignity to talk to somebody who has no id at all you are not the body you are not the mind you are not the intellect who are you okay you said i am hungry body you said i am angry mind body is not mind mind is not body who are you 
who are you one confusion next confusion do you see me in this video you say i see what do you mean by i see your ears see your nose sees your eyes see when you said i see you have decided you are the eyes i ask you now do you hear me you will say yes i hear you what hears eyes cannot hear tongue cannot hear ears hear you said i see that means you have taken yourself to the eyes you said i hear that means you have taken yourself to the ears now tell me eyes are not ears ears are not eyes eyes are not nose ears are not nose you are whether the eyes ear or nose tell me your identity properly you cannot say you are the body or mind you are not able to say whether you are the eyes ears or tongue what's all your glory of being a human being who cannot even give your own identity now see these are not don't think these are rhetorics these are purposefully made in this pattern for you to think and contemplate they are not rhetoric you have to think on these lines contemplate on these lines after today's session is over by the grace of guru parampara attempt will be made for you to know the real i to experience the real i after that for you to drop all the confusions for some time you have to continuously contemplate think maybe you hear the video after it is posted several times because there is no topic other than this the entire vedanta is only what i am talking for the next few minutes right so now who are you i am the son of so and so who is this boy he is my son when you said i am the son of so and so and he is your son you are the father now tell me whether you are the son or the father are you the son or the father so all the ids that we are giving now all the ids that we are giving now relate to the body mind intellect there are also no clarity total confusion and all problems belong to this body mind intellect you are not the body you are not the mind you are not the intellect what are you in sleep when you are not conscious of the body when you are not conscious of the mind when you are not conscious of the intellect you are happy everyone is happy in sleep because they are not conscious of the body they are not conscious of the mind they are not conscious of the intellect okay so i should sleep all the time no that won't help because in sleep you do not know you are that because the one who knows in the sleep has also sleeping because he is tired of the day's work you only after waking up because you enjoyed a good rest say i i i slept peacefully but you do not know that consciousness while sleeping that's the difference between sleep and meditation in sleep in sleep you are not aware of the presence of objects in samadhi you are conscious of the absence of objects we'll see that all later right we'll see that later you only take what you can understand right 
So you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not the intellect. All problems belong to the body, all problems belong to the mind, all problems belong to the intellect. Therefore, you have no problems. Okay, that's a negative statement. I want to be happy. That's in sleep. You are happy when they are not there. It's happiness. So what are you? I am eternal, immortal, blissful consciousness. Because what you experience in sleep is not the body, mind, and they are finite. This is permanent. It knows your sorrows, it knows your joys, it knows your pain, it knows your comfort. And it is not affected by them, like electricity is not affected by the defects of the uh, bulb Dal, or TV. Dal. Please put off your audio, please. Yes. So, you see, one small disturbance, it has cut me off from my line of thinking. Because when we talk on this subject, we have to go beyond our uh, ego itself. So therefore, we're in a different plane and to come back is difficult. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So. Therefore, it's not a mere negative state where there are no sorrows in sleep. It's a positive state where there is bliss. But that, in that state, the one who knows the bliss is also sleeping. So to bring that into waking, to bring that state into waking, the sleep, state of sleep into waking, where you can detach at will from the body, mind, intellect and experience that joy, feel that joy, is called samadhi or meditation. It's called samadhi or meditation. Attempt to detach from the false and attach to the real. This is meditation. Detach from the false, attached to the real. So all our sorrows belong to false data. That's why Gita says, Moghasha, false hopes. Moga karmanaha, false actions. Moga jnana, false knowledge. Vicheta tasa, bereft of discrimination. You are suffering. Therefore, Gurudev says, grief is the language of delusion. Grief is the language of delusion. That you are the body, mind, intellect. And through this body, mind, intellect, you want to get infinite happiness, immortality, stupid. They cannot give you, they don't have it. Then how will I get? You don't have to get it from anywhere. Anything got from anywhere in time and space has to be finite. Then how? You are that. You have to know that. It's not to be got. It has to be known. If it is finite, it has to be got. If it is infinite, it has to be known. Because infinite, there is no place where it is not. What you are, you have to know. Your identity, you have to know. So all people are listening for about 70 years, 80 years, and three, four lives also. They got it. You won't. Because what you are listening is only information. Then how will they get it? Reflection. Will you get completely? No. Better. Through information, the problem I don't know has gone. Through Reflection, contemplation, I don't understand has gone. Through meditation, I don't experience ghosts. These three dimensions of knowledge, 
ಶ್ರವಣ ಶ್ರವಣ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಸೇಸಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಷನ್ ಮನನ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಸೇಸಿ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ನಿಧಿ ಧ್ಯಾಸನ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಸೇಸಿ ಕಮಿಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ತ್ರೀ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ so the problem will not come by changing anything outside the solution will not come from any cha- changing anything from outside the solution will come by the right knowledge that what you are that what you assume to be not what you assume to be but what you know but the knowledge of what you are you have to know what you are and detach from what you have assumed to be this is called meditation through this you know you will get the right identity about yourself and when you get the right identity right identity of yourself you will find that's a immortal state that's a blissful state that's an enlightening state so we have now given you information also made you travel with me in reflection shravana and manana i have given you information i had i had i try to take you along with me in the travel through reflection now we have to try to find it own it stay there find it own it and stay there we have to do that that's called nididhyasana meditation before i go into that be very clear that the world is not capable of giving you either problem or happiness it's your unintelligent relationship with the world that gives you both problems and joy and joy and so uh, happiness the joys and sorrows or your perceptions of the mind mind is one that preventing you to know yourself what are mind flow of thoughts see an object a thought is formed and go on thinking about it flow of thoughts is called mind single thought is not a mind mind is fed by perceptions so it's object mind is fed by perso- object you are the subject happiness is what a relationship between a subject and an object a relationship between a subject and object. eat ice cream you are happy ice cream is the object you are the subject you ate it therefore you are happy so the now the objects we have known it's common sense cannot give some lasting meaningful happiness it can have flickers of happiness but each time you get a flicker of happiness through the object you become more and more dependent on that it becomes the seed of your sorrow dukkha yona jaha it says in gita so objects can only make you more and more dependent on them so the seeds of future sorrow they are changing continuously they are finite how can you give you the immortal infinite happiness so where should be it should be in the subject how do i know the subject first you know all that you know about the subject is wrong that's what i demonstrated to you all our knowledge 
about ourselves is erroneous. We think we are the body, you think you are the mind, you would think you are the intellect. First know what is wrong. And then, who am I? You were aware of the body when you were seven years old. You were aware of the body when you were a teenager. You were aware of the body when you were a middle-aged person. Continuously, you are aware of the body. Body is ever-changing. Therefore, the body has... Old body has gone, new body has come. You have not gone with the body. You experienced the changes, you saw the changes, but you are not the body. You experienced the mind, you, you saw their changes, you are not the mind. You can remember your waking experiences, you can remember your dream experiences, you can remember your deep sleep experiences. Waker is not the dreamer, waker is a rich man. Dreamer, he thinks, is a beggar. In deep sleep, both are not there. Each cancels the other. Waking cancels dream, waking and dream cancels deep sleep. Therefore, you have to be different from waking dream and deep sleep. To remember waking dream and deep sleep. But you have, should have been present there. And witness that. So also you should have been different from the childhood, youth and old age. Because you have known them. You have experienced them. You remember them. And you have not changed. You are the subject. The moods of the mind you remember. You have not changed. Therefore... It is you that remembers these changes, the changeless subject. You are that changeless subject who remembers all the changes of the body, mind, and intellect. Right? This much is the information and reflection. Now we should try to experience that through meditation. I shall try to help you to know that. I should try I, I shall try to help you to know that. You may not completely know that today, but you will have a vague feeling of that at least. You will get an idea of what it is. The example given in Panchadashi is, you go to pick up your child or your ward from the class. Forty of them are chanting Gita. You do hear your child's voice because it's one with the forty. But you cannot particularly identify that because it's mixed with the 40. So this self, with this knowledge, you will probably experience it with other things. When the 39 children keep quiet, you can hear your child properly. When your body, mind, intellect, you are completely detaching, you can completely feel this. Till then, you will definitely feel it, but gradually it will improve on our practice. Our Paramaguru gives a lovely example. When you are bathing in Ganges, half the body is in water, experiencing cool water. Other half is exposed to sun. Right? You are still enjoying because the half is in water. Sun, you won't mind because when it is too hot, you can dip into the cool water. So when you have this knowledge, major portion of you is in cool waters. Some is exposed to hot water. When it is too hot, dip into this self, dip into this consciousness, dip into this meditation, you will be happy. You have to practice. You have to practice. 
the principle on which meditation is going to be, I told you the whole world is a subject-object relationship. You are the subject. But now you are mixed up with the object. You even do not know that you are different from that as when you say, I am hungry or I am angry. Totally mixed up. Totally mixed up. You should be first able to separate them. How do you separate them? By becoming a witness of them. A witness is not involved in the action. By witnessing them, you detach from them. And then when you have detached from the mind through the exercise I'm going to say, watch the mind. When you watch the mind, you are different from the mind. When you watch the mind, you are different from the mind. But still, you are watching. You, you, you are not the absolute consciousness. First, watch the mind. Then be conscious of the one who is watching. Stay there. When you stay there as the one who is watching, the watching drops gradually and pure you, the consciousness, remains. Watch your thoughts. Identify the one who is watching. Stay there in that watching. Watching drops. You alone remain. This is Nididhyasana. It's complete experience of the self, which is God. So you can call it Atma Darshan or Ishwara Darshan. Atma Darshan or Ishwara Darshan. It will happen now. May not be clear. Maybe like in the chorus, but it will happen. Go on practicing it. Subdue your thoughts. Like one by one child, when he stops, your child's voice is clear. Subdue your thoughts. You will be able to experience this more and more clearly. Right? So what are you going to do? I will chant Om three times. I will be doing it in three different times. You will know why. I will tell you. Three times... I will be chanting this womb three times or four times. You will know why I am chanting different times. Witness my chanting. Witness your hearing. When I... And then... And then... After I stop, you cannot stay there permanently. Your mind will start working. Don't try to do anything with the mind. Just watch the mind. Many people say, I'm not able to control the mind. Why do you want to control? Just watch the mind and know you are different. Don't try to control the mind. Let it do its job. You are not the mind. So here we are trying to give you that exercise of trying to watch the mind. Let the mind do whatever it wants. You just observe it. And be conscious of the observer. Stay there. Then the observing drops, consciousness remains. Right? Shall we start? I will chant, oh, be conscious of the silence between the two ohms. And when I end, be conscious of that silence. And when the mind is started, Disturbing thoughts are flowing. Be conscious of the thoughts. Just watch them. You don't change them. Just watch them. By the very process, you become different from the mind. Okay. All of you, close your videos, close your eyes, close your videos, close your eyes, and listen. Ooh. 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 
Between two wombs, there is womb. There is silence. Between two wombs, there is silence. Before the womb is started, there was silence. After womb is finished, there is silence. Therefore, what runs through womb is silence. Silence disturbed is sound. Be conscious of the silence. When I chant, be aware of the silence between the two wombs. Be aware of the silence between the two wombs. Om. Om. Now again I will chant this room. Do not try to, by your own voluntary action, disturb the silence. But when it gets disturbed, be aware of the thoughts. Ooh. Ooh. Not only be aware of the silence and thoughts, be aware of the one who is aware. That is important. Stay there. Be aware of the one who is aware. Stay there. Ooh. 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 Now, when you listen to that and became conscious, your consciousness, life, that is the real I. You existed, am, that is the real I, I am. That's why all of us start with I am, then so and so. That's not the so and so is all associations coming and going. I am is constant. Not only in you it is constant, it's the same in all. The life in me is the life everywhere. 
even the stone has life science has proved life cannot be separated from one another because life is existence if it is not existing it cannot be there existence has life so life and existence are not two different things i am this existence cannot be cut i the existence sitting in this chair which exists sit on, which is on the floor which exists which is in the space which exists we are all connected by this existence which is life i am therefore i am is common i am so and so all our associations the body mind intellect that is not a full solution i am is common okay but where is happiness i am when you are detached from the body mind intellect it's by nature happiness because in sleep you experience not only that everything else in this world you love children parents teachers all you love because they give you happiness you love what gives you happiness what you love most myself because all other things i love because they give me happiness i love myself most so i am the source of maximum happiness which is experienced in sleep all happiness is me i the life the consciousness am the existence am the bliss absolute happiness i consciousness chit am existence sat bliss ananda i am satchi dananda and this is the same in all therefore whom are you going to love whom are you going to reject it's all the yourself therefore scriptures give importance to this sarvatma bhava seeing yourself in all first know what you are then see the same in all sarvatma bhava in sixth chapter gita before bhagavan concludes his discourse on meditation he gives four verses on the sarvatma bhava to know all this is me that will take away the sense of duality the sense of uh, good and bad the sense of uh, wishing and uh, uh, getting agitated the sense of wanting to hug and to reject all are your self whom to hug whom to reject this is meditation and after feeling this i am seeing in all you understand what is this mind this consciousness flowing through the various holes in you gets split and shows as though different like the one light one ray of light passing through a prism gets split into seven colors so also this consciousness through the mind alone gets split and appears as the world as experienced in your dream in your dream you alone are the enemy you alone are the friend you alone is the police you alone is the judge in dream consciousness through the mind gets split so you alone is real nothing else is real and then when i said you are silence where there are no thoughts a lot of people have this confusion that no thought stage is the highest correct they are not wrong but that's not all you have to know more if you arrest your breathing for one minute there won't be thoughts because breathing and thoughts are connected that is not the highest if you are in coma no thoughts that's not the highest no thoughts can be practiced by yoga there the mind is not lost mind has become only dormant manor lena 
thoughts have to be eliminated through contemplation, losing value for everything in the external world through contemplation. At that stage, even if thoughts are there, you see the one only. The duality is not there. Through thoughts, through the plurality, through the differences, you see only one. That is called real nirvika samadhi, where there are no agitations, where there are no differences. It is not nirvikalpa means only freedom from thoughts. Not having thoughts alone is not the ultimate goal. There only mind is dormant, not lost. Mind will be lost when you lose value for the world through vichara, through contemplation. And understand whatever gives you, whatever gives me sorrow is what you have a value for. And the whole world is a bluff. To give it any value and to suffer is our choice. Okay. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Try to practice. It will be put in the YouTube. The link will be given to you. You can listen to many times. Pray to God to make it your experience. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnath. 